So this year, I made a promise to myself that I wouldn't change clubs just for the sake of it. And you've got to understand, I get sent a lot of nice, shiny equipment. And a lot of it I test, I really like. But sometimes I just change it for the sake of it. And this year, I've stuck to it. I'm saying, no, I'm not going to change it unless I honestly believe it's going to make a benefit to my golf game. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what I currently have in the bag. And not only that, because I'm here in my home simulator, I've hit every club on GC Quad to give you a rundown of how far I hit every club in my bag. Let's kick things off and talk about the putter first. Now this putter, you've got to understand, I get access to a lot of putters, a lot of crazy ideas, some that work, some that aren't as good. But this particular putter and this style of putter, I've had in the bag for a long time time and I absolutely love it. In my bag, I have this putter, the Even Roll ER2 putter. Now, if you've been a big fan of the channel for a long time, you know I've had this design in my bag for a, a number of years now. I, I, probably, maybe knocking on to four years, I've had this exact design in my bag. Recently, I've changed it to the black model just because and this is only because I think it looks better. This head is fantastic. I love the feel of it off the face. I think it's a fairly forgiving putter. I think the weight of it, the overall weight of this putter is absolutely spot on for me. I like the design. It's not too complicated, but it gives a little bit of forgiveness. I've got it in 34 inches of length. I love this black shaft. I think it looks awesome. And this also, this new version has a gravity grip on it, which has this kind of steel rod that goes through the back, which apparently helps with more consistent roll on longer putts. For me, this design isn't going anywhere. There's not many putters that I pick up and go, yeah, that could definitely swap and change the even roll. Over the last few years, I've tested a few, but none have been good enough, in my opinion, to replace this, the even roll ER2. And I can't imagine it leaving the bag anytime soon and i want to give you the chance to win your very own even roll putter all you have to do to enter is be a subscriber to the youtube channel it is free to do make sure you have your notification bell turned on like this video and leave a comment down below the comment with the most likes will win a brand new even roll putter now moving on to my clubs let's start off with start from the wedges so I carry four wedges in my bag. I've got a lob wedge, a sand wedge, a gap wedge, and then my pitching wedge. Now, three of them are the same, but let's talk about the lob wedge first. The lob wedge I have in 60 degrees of loft. I have 10 degrees of bounce, and I have the tailor-made MG2 wedges. Now, you might have seen my video last, it was probably last summer now, where I said these are the best clubs tailor-made I've ever made. I mean, what a claim that is. And the reason being for me, TaylorMade aren't renowned for making great wedges. They're renowned for making great woods, now making great putters, even a great golf ball. But wedges is always a department they've struggled with. In my opinion, no longer. This wedge feels as good as anything I've ever tested. I love the fact that the face goes rusty. Like I said, I've had the, these clubs in the bag now for about 10 months or so, maybe a little bit shorter, about eight or nine months, and the face have gone nicely rusty. You might have seen in the video, I had that magic spray that made the face go really rusty. I've let these rust naturally. And for me, when I sit the club behind the ball, that rust just gives me confidence that I'm gonna get the ball to spin. You saw in the test, I actually didn't see that much difference in spin, but I like the look of it. And I think it, things like reducing glare and things like that. I've got it in just a standard dynamic gold wedge shaft. And another thing I do like about these wedges is the fact that the, the grip feels a little bit more parallel than some of the grips I've tried. And as I mentioned, I've got that in 60 degree. I've got it in a 56 degree, which is my sand wedge. That's in 12 degrees of bounce. I play that a little bit more out of bunkers. And I've got a 52 degree, which is my gap wedge, which I've got in nine degrees of bounce. Love these wedges. They're all in the same spec shaft wise and grip wise. Um, and then my last wedge that I'll include in this little wedge section, because I'm gonna show you the distances of the wedges, is I've got my pitching wedge, which is the bl ping blueprint wedge, which I've got at 46 degrees. Um, I'll come onto the irons a little bit more in detail in a minute, but that's, they're my four wedge makeup. Now, I've gotta be honest, wedge play isn't 
my forte. Some would say it's my weakness and they would be right. Um, also, it's quite interesting doing this little wedge test I've just done on GC Quad. It also shows there's a little bit too much of a gap in potentially, something that I might need to look at in the future or just be able to be a little bit more accurate in my strike. So my lob wedge carries on average 82 yards. I honestly thought it was a tiny bit longer than that, so that's interesting to know. My sand wedge then carries 96 yards which leaves a 14 yard gap between those two clubs, a little bit too big. But then we see even a slightly bigger gap. My gap wedge carries on average, and these are all carry distances with Pro V1s, 112 yards. And then finally my pitching wedge is 130 yards. And I see a little bit of a weakness there because I've got like a 15 yard gap between my sand wedge and my gap wedge and then an 18 yard gap between my gap wedge and my pitching wedge. So no wonders when I've got like a 120 yard golf shot, I struggle because for me, it's right between my gap wedge and my pitching wedge. And I'm not particularly great at controlling distances in my wedges, something I possibly need to work on while I've got this home simulator. So they're my wedges. I do like the look of them. I love the feel of them. As we've seen there from the testing, maybe the gapping is something I need to potentially work on, either changing the lofts or, or working out different lengths of swings, because they're all full swings, by the way. Then moving into my irons. So you saw one of them, which is my pitching wedge. But from there, I use four down to nine iron in the ping blueprint iron. Now, the ping blueprint iron is one of the first ping forged irons that I've really fallen in love with. Ping don't make forged irons that often. And I've used ping irons in the past and I've been a big fan of ping irons in the past. The one thing I felt like they've always lacked is feel. Well, not in the ping blueprint. The ping blueprint for me is as close to a, a blade as ping have ever got. It's the fact that it's in a forged head, it gives me that feeling of a softer strike when I make contact, which I personally really like. I also really like the fact that the lofts aren't too strong. So for example, my, my seven iron is 34 degrees of loft. You'll see a lot of lofts out there these days where the loft is cranked closer to 30 degrees for a seven iron. I don't like that. I like them to be quite traditional in loft. Shaft wise, I use the dynamic gold um, X100 shaft, so an extra stiff shaft. And I use these, the Golf Pride MCC grips with this little kind of alignment reminder along the back. I like them, they're good. Four to pitching wedge. Um, distance wise, this is also quite interesting. So again, this was great doing this little distance test because sometimes I, and I think a lot of people get maybe guilty of this, think the average distance they hit their clubs is closer to the maximum distance they hit the clubs. This little test was good for me because it, it kind of brought me down to a little bit more reality in the fact that the average distance is a little bit shorter than what I sometimes predict I hit. So nine iron, let's kick things off with there. I carry my nine iron 146 yards. I carry my eight iron 161 yards. So There's quite a big gap there, 15 yards, too much. Then we go from 161 to 170 with my seven iron, 182 with my six iron, 193 with my five iron, and 206 with my four iron. From eight iron up, it's not too bad. The gapping's pretty consistent. Just that little kind of too big a space between my nine and my eight there. Something again, I might need to look at. Maybe a potential loft and lie check. And that might be a good thing to do when you, when you get back out playing golf is a potential loft and lie check on your clubs because sometimes they can move, certainly if they're forged heads. So that's how far I hit each club. Just to give you some idea as well, I swing my seven iron at about 92 miles per hour. So just to give people watching a somewhat of a context of how far and how fast I swing my club, that is how far I hit them. And then my other iron in my bag that I've got is, so I don't have a three iron, I go from four iron straight to two iron. Now, again, if you've been a long time viewer of the channel, you might have known I've had a certain two iron in my bag for an awful long time. I'm sorry to break this to everybody, Unfortunately, that two iron is no longer in the bag. And the reason being, wasn't really of its own fault to some degree, the head ended up becoming a bit loose. 
And I had another two iron knocking around and I stuck it in the bag and I must admit, unfortunately, something slightly new and shiny has taken place of that old Callaway two iron. Um, and performance wise, just matches up to as good as it can do. And it, like I say, unless it, I might glue that head back in one day, but so far this has been an unbelievable replacement. So the two iron I have in my bag now is this, the Titleist U500 iron. Again, I tested this last year, I tested this along with the U510 one iron. And I said even in that video, when I tested this U500, I could definitely put this in the bag, no questions asked. This is 18 degrees of loft. I've got a hazardous smoke shaft in this. I've got a normal cross line, uh, sorry, tall velvet grip. And then distance wise, I am carrying my two iron at the moment, 234 yards. I'm a big fan of two irons off the tee. I feel like it gives me a lot of safety. I do like hitting it into long par fours or par fives as well. I like the fact I can vary the shot with it. I can hit it high, low, I can do loads of things with my two iron, and this has been a great addition. Like I say, one that I probably wouldn't have made unless my Callaway two iron head came loose. I might replace that one day, like I say. Then we get into our longer clubs. Um, just on that note, before I come on to that, the gap between four iron and two iron is 28 yards. I do often miss a three iron. I do, if I could have a 15th club in the bag, I would instantly put a three iron in the bag without question. I don't feel like I can get rid of my two iron because I use it too often. And if I did get rid of my two iron, I feel like the gap between my three iron and my three wood then would be too vast. Talking about my three wood. Now this comes as no surprise to many people watching. I got tempted recently of trying a new three wood. I did a Tor Edge exotic three wood but this three would have knocked it out of the park. Yes, everybody, you know what's coming. Cobra F7, old bluey. Um, this has to be now the longest serving golf club in my bag by quite a long way. I have this in 14.5 degrees of loft. I love the fact that it gives me protection with these two rails along the bottom. I can hit down on it a little bit more. Again, it's not a club I hit loads off the tee. I feel like the ball flight is a little bit high when I hit it off the tee but that's great when hitting into par fives, great when hitting out the rough. I've got this in a, a Fujikora, uh, I shouldn't even have to look at this anymore, should I, let's be honest. 65 gram Flex X, and then just a standard uh, Lambkin grip, the same grip that's always been on it, possibly could do with a bit of a change. Uh, love this club. I carry this three wood. Again, I thought potentially I carried it a little bit further than this, but on average, I carry this three wood 244 yards. So weirdly, only 10 yards longer than my two iron. I feel like I can hit that further though. I can get definitely get it up to 250 and even further. But on average, it's 244 carry for old bluey. Okay, the last club in my bag. Now this one, this club, almost periodically, at the start of the season, I will change for a newer version. Almost every year for the last five or six years, when driver launches come out in January, I am one of the first people to put a new driver in the bag because I feel like new technology is either better, it's faster, it looks better, it sounds better, whatever it may be, I'm very prone to changing the driver. But not this year. This year, I am still using a driver that I was blown away with in last year. In fact, last year in 2019, when I reviewed this driver, I said, this is the driver to beat in 2019. And to some degree, I'm gonna roll that over. I still think this is the driver to beat in 2020. This is, under this quite cool little personalized head cover, this is the Cobra F9. I think the Cobra F9 absolutely nailed it last year. And honestly, if you said to me two years ago, three years ago, you would have a Cobra driver and three wood in the bag, I'd have laughed at you. I just wouldn't have seen it because I did not like Cobra drivers for a long time. I always thought they were weak performing. I always thought they were terrible off the bottom until this came out. And I'm sure I've mentioned it many, many times. I am not sponsored by any brand to play their clubs. These are the clubs I choose to play. 
and I choose to play this, the Cobra F9. I've got it in the Arctic white with the black crown. I love the look of this driver. I've got it in nine degrees, so standard. I've got the weight forward, there's two weights. There's a 14 gram weight and a two gram weight. I have the weight forward for a little bit lower spinning. I have it in a hazardous smoke shaft, just like the two iron I showed you before, in extra stiff. I've got it in the standard, um, I think this is just a Lampkin. I don't know what this is. This is the, well, it's the Cobra grip. It's the same grip as the, must just be a Golf Ride Tour Velvet grip. Um, I love this driver. On average today, when I tested it in here in the home simulator, I was average carrying 286 yards with an average club head speed of 111 miles per hour, just to give you some point of reference. So that average carry distance is typically rolling over 300 yards with a spin around 2000 and a ball speed of around about 162 miles per hour. For me, this driver is unbelievable. I think it's one of the best drivers that have been, been ever made. I just think it is features so many great stuff. And honestly, this year, loads of great drivers came out, but in my opinion, nothing beat this, the F9. And even when I tested it, nothing beat it. A few more little points. Golf ball I use, Titleist Pro V1. I have used other balls over the last few years. I've tested out the TP5 a lot and really liked it, if I'm honest. And recently I tested out the TaylorMade Pix ball and really liked it. But for me, the, te the Pro V1 just gives me that seal of approval. There's, 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 there's just too much history in this ball for me not to play it, really, if I'm dead honest. And I've not been let down by it. Um, also, just to give you a few bits, glove that I use, I use the Nike. Um, Tour Classic, yeah, I am sponsored by Nike, so I'm going to use their glove, but I do like this one, the Tour Classic. And then bits of technology, I have the Garmin Approach G80 strapped to the side of my bag. This is great for GPS and also a handheld launch monitor. And on my wrist, I have the Garmin S62 watch as well. Again, both sponsored by Garmin and Nike, so I use those fantastic products. That is what's in the bag, why they're in the bag how far I hit each club. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash like, subscribe to the channel. I'll be back with more content here from the home simulator. Guys, stay tuned, lots more to come. And that is my full rundown of what's in the bag. We'll see you next time.